a reading from the book of Genesis. After the man, Adam had eaten of the tree, the Lord God called to the man and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, Who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat. The man replied, The woman whom you put here with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, Why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, The serpent tricked me into it, and so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly you shall crow, and death you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike you at your head, while you struck at his heel. The man called his wife Eve because she became the mother of all the living. The word of the Lord. My heart exhausts in the Lord my Savior. My heart exalts in the Lord my Savior. My heart exalts in the Lord. My horn is exalted in his court. I have swallowed up my enemies. I rejoice in my victory. My heart exalts in the Lord my Savior. The bowels of the mighty are broken, while the torturing guilt on strength. The well-fed hide themselves out from bread, while the hungry beating on spoil. The barren wife bears seven sons, while the mother of many languishes. My heart exalts in the Lord, my Savior. The Lord puts to death and gives life. He casts down to the nether world. He raises up again. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He humbles and he exalts. My heart exalts the Lord, my Savior. He raises the needy from the dust. From the dung heap, he lifts up the poor. He seats them with nobles and makes a glorious throne their heritage. My heart exalts the Lord, my Savior. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, Lord. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, <clears throat> and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. Brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus.
Today we celebrate the feast of Mary, mother of the church. Our Holy Father, Pope Francis, established this particular feast to follow after the solemnity of Pentecost, which is the birth of the church, the day the Holy Spirit was bestowed upon the apostles and disciples of Jesus Christ to go out and make the church known, to make Jesus Christ known. And the Holy Father has established this feast to follow after, to remind us of the role of the Blessed Virgin Mary in our lives as believers. She is, first of all, the spouse of the Holy Spirit, the daughter of the Father and the mother of the Son. That is her place in the Trinity, and for that matter, her place in the church. The Gospel reading of today reminds us that to make Mary part of our homes, to make Mary part of our families, is the duty of every disciple of Jesus Christ. So that if we have celebrated Pentecost and we believe we are filled with the Holy Spirit, it follows logically that we call her blessed. Because if you go through the New Testament, those who are filled with the Holy Spirit, they call her blessed. Elizabeth, for instance, she was only able to call her blessed because she was filled with the Holy Spirit. So it, it, it can be unfortunate when you have Christians who claim they have monopoly over the Holy Spirit and are filled with the Holy Spirit and disregard her. I don't believe it's the Holy Spirit they have. Because if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, it's logical that this woman will be special to you. It was by the power of the same Holy Spirit that made her conceive and give birth to Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. And the last act Jesus performed on the cross before he died was to entrust her to us through the beloved disciple. So as we celebrate this feast, we are being reminded of how devoted we ought to be towards the Blessed Mother. Let us also, in the light of what has happened to our brothers and sisters in Nigeria, use the next nine days beginning today to pray the Holy Rosary for the souls of those who have perished, as well as their families, and also for the conversion of these criminals. It is a novena that, as chaplain of this church, I have declared for us, and if you are part of this community, if you're a member of this community, you have to do it. It is an obligation I am imposing on us. And I know we can do it. To pray the rosary every day for the next nine days, beginning today. The sorrowful mysteries. Only the sorrowful mysteries. Let us pray. My heart is broken as I speak, but... There isn't much that we can do apart from praying. And I believe that prayer will work. Prayer will turn around things in Nigeria. If those are the helm of office and are the helm of uh, the, the country, are failing to do what they must do, we will entrust it to the hand of our God and our God will intervene. Let us rise and present our petitions to the Lord. Our response will be, Lord, may your mother pray for us. Lord, may your mother pray for us. Let us pray for our Holy Father, our bishops and priests, as they face the trials and challenges of our times, that Our Lady may share with them the profound trust 
for which he has been called blessed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, may your mother pray for us. For peace, that we may learn to have the same attitude towards all, putting away ambitious thoughts and taking our place with Mary amongst God's lowly ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, may your mother pray for us. That Jesus may make us fervent and humble, so that we may never be sent away empty with the rich or cast down from our place with the mighty, but find joy in God who saves us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, may your mother pray for us. For the sick among us, the poor, the imprisoned and addicted, and all who have special need of prayer, that Mary, who sang of God's mercy to his little ones, may mediate his loving kindness in all their needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, may your mother pray for us. For all who have died and are still waiting the blessed vision of their hope, that Mary may visit them with the gift of entrance into the joy of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, may your mother pray for us. Let us, in the silence of our hearts, continue to pray for our personal intentions. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. God our Father, hear the prayers of your children who gather before you this morning to celebrate the feast of your daughter, Mary, Mother of the Church. Through her intercession, may your favor remain with us, and may you guide us even as we seek your face all the days of our lives. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 